Program AR is an augmented reality trigger action programming system with the goal of making robot programming accessible to all users. Our system utilizes virtual zones that define areas of importance within a workspace. For example, objects to pick and locations to place. These zones may be moved around and resized directly within the context of a user's real workspace. Program AR uses trigger action programming to create rules that perform an action when a specified trigger occurs. Rules include if a trigger occurs, then perform an action, or while a trigger is true, continue performing an action. These rules can be made up of multiple triggers and actions defined by the user. For example, if box one is in zone one, then move box one inside zone two. To verify the behavior of a program, the robot's digital twin can simulate its behavior before execution. Program ARR also validates rules based on the state of the world. If a rule is green, then it will execute. If a rule is red, it will not execute. Finally, when running the rules on the real robot, users can work simultaneously with the robot on collaborative tasks. In this video, I'll show you how to get Program AR working in Unity and connecting to ROS over WCL2. So if you go to this repo, Program AR, you can scroll down to this command. So you want to clone this repository, this Unity repository. So I'll paste it in and you can hit enter and it'll clone. Then you'll want to go to Unity Hub and add project and go to wherever you cloned it and open it. So I'm using Unity 2020.3.38 F1. And once you open it, it'll take a little bit to bring in all of the different assets but you'll run into a few errors and warnings, but it'll still work. So you can just clear those out. And next you'll wanna to go to this folder, Program AR, and then you'll wanna to go to Scenes, and then open up the demo scene. So now if you hold the right click and you move down WASD, you can go down to the scene here. And this is just how the scene looks for the study that I conducted a while ago that utilized the system. And you can read about that in the paper that I've written. But this is what you'll also see in ROS. So now that we have this up and running, we can go to our ROS, our ROS workspace. And what you'll need to do is go to the repo here and it's on the program AR branch. And you can run this directly on Ubuntu, whether that's on a Ubuntu desktop or on WSL2, and you can follow these steps. However, what I'm doing is I'm using Docker, and in this repository here, you can see this ROS Docker setup that I have, and you can just follow these steps to get it running. But basically what you wanna do, if you run the Docker implementation, you get this git clone, and you want to change into the source directory, paste that command and clone it. Then you'll want to go back a directory, run raw step, which I've already done, and then run catkin build. Once that's done building, you can source the directory. So source develop setup.zsh. And then you'll want to go hostname dash uppercase I. So this is the IP that I am going to run in this ROS workspace. And you can see in this command on the right, you'll want to add that as the TCP IP, and then the port will stay 10,000. So if I go ROS launch task planner program AR demo dot launch, and then TCP IP the IP and the port, I can press enter there. And then you'll see Arvis pop up with the robot. And it'll have the motion planning tasks on the right. And then if you want, you can take off these T 
TFs here. So it just shows the robot. Next, you'll want to get the hostname dash I in your WCL2 workspace. So in here, this is the IP address. And so from there, you can add that IP address to the ROS connection prefab in the hierarchy in Unity and add it to the ROS IP address. So 192.168.0.131. If you're just using Ubuntu, this IP will also be used to launch the ROS launch file. So once that's input, you can press play. And now you'll see the scene pop up in here in Arvis, and then you also see it here. So looks like I have some rules already created, but you can delete those. So what I'll do first is add a new zone, and then I'll move this zone one right next to box four. And then I'll add a new zone, and then I'll make this a little bigger, and I'll move this over box one. Next, I'll create a rule. So we have options of if then rules, which is if this trigger is true, then perform a single action, or a while do rule, which is while a trigger is true, keep performing the same action. So I'm just gonna do an if then rule. And you can hold down the right click button and move around WASD to simulate a HoloLens. So first I'll create a trigger. So if any box is in zone two, save, then create an action, then move all boxes in zone two inside zone one. Then I'll save that. And if you click on simulate action, you can simulate it before it occurs and you'll see it, this digital twin moving around in the in Unity. Or you can just press save. And then you can see here that the rule on the left and the right is both green because there is a box in zone two and it can be moved to zone one. So I'll play the program. And it'll scan the environment and come up with a motion planning path to pick up box one and put it in zone one. And as you can see on the right, this robot is moving a little faster than the robot in Arviz. And that's because Arviz is simulating the actual speed of the physical robot and what it'll look like more closely in real world. Whereas this one on the right will kind of give a future view of what's going to happen. And that's how you get the program up and running. If you'd like to run this on the HoloLens, you can go to the Mixed Reality uh, tab here, hit Remoting, and I would recommend using this holographic remoting to just display this uh, on the HoloLens. You can also then print out the QR code that is in this repository uh, in here. There's a QR code right here. And this QR code, once looked at by the HoloLens, will center the scene on the QR code. So you can do this on any table. And that's it. Let me know if you have any questions.